Most people aren't using Notion Calendar to its full potential, and that's why their productivity is suffering. But in this video, I'm going to fix that by showing you five settings that you need to turn on right now to take your time management to the next level. And don't worry, I'll show you how to set up a connected Notion Calendar if you haven't done that before. By the way, if you're new here, I've helped over 18,000 people with paid and free Notion templates, so I've seen what works and what doesn't when it comes to setting up an efficient system. Once you apply these five changes, you'll stop feeling overwhelmed by your tasks, you'll gain total control of your schedule, and you'll actually follow through on your goals without feeling like Notion is just another to-do list app that doesn't actually get you the results that you've hoped for. But if you don't implement these settings, then you'll keep wasting time, struggling to stay on top of your workload, and worst of all, you won't even realize how much easier it could be. So here's what we're going to cover. How to implement one of the best productivity methods directly in your workspace. A setting that automatically tracks your time without you having to do anything. A simple tweak that makes identifying tasks effortless at a glance. A way to instantly remove the admin work from your tasks. And a Notion calendar trick that makes sticking to good habits incredibly easy. But before we get into those five settings, I'll show you how to set up a Notion calendar properly so everything runs smoothly. But if you've already got your Notion calendar set up, then feel free to skip to this timestamp. All right, let's dive in. All right, here's how to connect your Notion workspace to the Notion calendar app. So for this to work, what you need here is a calendar. So you'll click on calendar view. Now, if you already have a task list in a database like this, I'll just write tasks here. If you already have this task one, then what you can do instead is right click on table and do duplicate. And here what you'll do is click on layout and click on calendar. And then what you'll do is click the open and calendar button. But if you don't already have a dashboard, then what you can do is simply write forward slash calendar and click on calendar view. And here we'll create a new database and you can call this your calendar or whatever you want. Now I don't recommend doing a calendar from scratch. I recommend using a task list database like this. This will just allow you to do a lot more. And these two here are the same database. We're just seeing them in different views. So for task one here, if I click on the date and say today's date, if I click on the calendar, which I should probably rename calendar, you can see here task one is sitting on March 3rd. So these two here are the same database. Now we'll do one last thing. I'll click on the plus here and I'll click on checkbox. I'll just do a space bar for this. We don't need to write any text there and I'll just drag this to the side. So now if I click on open in calendar, automatically now in my Notion calendar, I can see task one showing up here. Now you might be thinking, why don't I then see task two from my task list? Well, in order for it to show up here at the top, just like task one is, it needs to have a date associated with it. So task one here has March 3rd. So let's just give task two here the fourth and then I'll go to my calendar. So if I go back here, you can see task two is now showing up. So that is how to connect your Notion calendar to your Notion task list slash your Notion calendar database. Now the biggest mistake I see in Notion calendar is people keeping their tasks here at the top. See if it's sitting in this top bar here, then it actually belongs under all day. So instead, what we're going to do is drag this down like this, and we can literally drag these tasks to when we're going to do them. And what we're doing here is time blocking, also known as time boxing and daily scheduling. If you're new to Notion Calendar, firstly, you can do this where you can literally drag the task and say how long you want it to go for. So you don't just drag the task on here, you can literally drag here and say how long the task is going to take. Now, as you can see this red line here, that is my time right now. So any task that I've dragged past this red line here, that is then planning the future. In other words, time blocking. Now, what most people do with time blocking is go back to their Notion database and say, oh, okay, I want to add task three, and then I'm going to click here on today's date. Then they go back to their Notion calendar and see it sitting here at the top, and then they drag it down and put it wherever they want it like that. This is adding an extra step. You can actually do it directly in Notion Calendar. So if I click and drag here, at the top here, I can write, you know, task four, whatever the task is. And by default, as you can see, it's a different color. That's because by default, it will be your Gmail account. And then we're bringing in Notion databases. So what you need to do is click on your email here and then change it to this new task database. Now that's annoying to do every single time. So what you can do is click up here on this icon and then right click on the task database and say, make this the calendar default. This way now, when I start drawing here and say task six, as you can see, it is in yellow. This here is by default my task database. And since I added task six here in Notion Calendar and click on calendar, I can see task six here as well. 
Now, as you see here in table, it's automatically added here 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. What it's doing is literally taking this data here right from your Notion calendar. Now this is really useful because this information here is being picked up automatically. I didn't have to fill this out. All I do is drag here and say task seven and that data gets automatically added into my database. But the second setting mistake that people have in their Notion calendar is that they don't do anything with this information. So what we'll do is go back to our dashboard. As you can see, task seven has been added here. I'm just going to click on these three dots here and make this full width. And what I'll do is click on the plus here to add a column, also known as a property. And this property here will be a formula. Now formulas can be kind of overwhelming, but don't worry, I will show you exactly how this works. So you'll click on this space here and you're going to add this formula here. Now this formula will be linked in the description so you can just copy and paste it. But basically what this means is, show me the date between the date end and the date start. So when we started the task and show me that data in minutes. And then here we can click on save. Now, as you can see, automatically this data here is showing up. So we can see task one, 60 minutes, task two, 180 minutes, task three, 60 and so forth. And that is coming directly from here. So if I just add another task, we'll call this task eight. I'm very creative, aren't I? We can see it's from three to five. So that should be 120 minutes. So if we go back, we can see here task eight, three to five, 120 minutes. This automatically happens in the background and we don't have to do anything. And if we hover down here at the bottom of this column, we could see calculate and we could say here, show me more options and show me the sum. So this adds all of this up for me. By the way, if you like the idea of time tracking as you're doing your tasks, then check out headquarters. It's my premium notion template. It's got time tracking built in and it actually breaks down your tasks based on project and based on life bucket. This has changed my life as I get to see where I'm actually spending my time. I'm literally seeing where my time is going with my real data. The template has over 2,500 users and a five-star rating. It's linked in the description if you wanna check it out. Now, the problem here with these tasks is it's kind of difficult to tell the tasks apart. Obviously, I haven't done a great job here of calling all of them task one, task two, task three. But the point is, it's still kind of difficult to tell what all of these tasks are about. So here's a hack for identifying the tasks quickly. If we click here on task one, for example, and let's just say that this is a meeting, I'll change it to meeting. If we click on add icon here, and then let's search for phone, click on, let's do this phone icon, and then close this. If we go back to the calendar, you can see that emoji sitting next to it. This just makes it a lot easier for me to identify with simply just this emoji. And if we do this icon for all meetings, so let's say task seven is also a phone call meeting. Let's do that meeting. As you can see, it's just very easy for us to identify what this task is. Now, as part of that, here's a thing that I like to do. Let's say you're going to do task two here. What are we up to? Task nine here. What you can do with these tasks here is if they're in the morning is label these as frog. Now you might be thinking, why am I going to change this to the frog icon? Well, you might've heard of this idea before. This is a productivity hack called eat the frog, where basically you schedule to do the most difficult task the first thing in the morning. This is because if you have to eat a frog at one point in the day, why not do it the first thing in the morning? But I know what you're thinking. So I have these two meetings here, but I don't have any time to prep for them. So maybe I should have dragged this here and dragged that here just to give it some breathing room after. Well, you could drastically decrease the time in meetings or for any task that you're about to do by creating task templates. So what we'll do is go back to your dashboard and click here on the down arrow. And this has to be on your task database here. So I'll click on the down arrow and click on new template. And this here will be a meeting template, for example. Obviously, if you're not having meetings, you can do something else. Basically, we're creating a template for something that you do often. So here we could write, you know, agenda, notes, tasks for others, tasks for me, for example. This here isn't an award-winning meeting template, but you get the point. So what we've done now is created this meeting template here. So if I click now on meeting here, you can see this meeting template shows up. So if I click on that, automatically this shows up. So now as I'm about to step in this meeting here at 8 a.m., I already have my meeting template set up. Now the last mistake that people are doing comes down to their habits. So what I've seen in other Notion tours is people setting up habits as a separate database. So, you know, they'll do a calendar here, click on calendar, they'll say habits, go running or whatever it is. Now the problem is you have to check another database and often people put those as well on different pages. So you have to check your task page, you have to check your journal page, you have to check your habits page, you have to check your fitness page, etc. It's way too much. So instead your habits will be built in here. Well, not actually here. Instead you'll add them directly into your Notion calendar. See, you know every single day 
you want to go for a run. So you'll just write run here. And when you hold down the option key, you simply duplicate the tasks. So as you can see, I'm literally planning out when I'm going to do my habit. Or let's say I want to journal, I can drag this here, hold down option. And now I'm literally time blocking when I'm going to do my habit. Now I'll show you a last bonus setting. What we can do here is duplicate on the table and duplicate. And this here will be your habit tracker. Now for habit tracker, what we'll do is filter and we are going to filter by the name and it has to contain, let's say the word run. So now I could see every single time that I'm going to run. The problem is if I check these in here, it's not separating the times that I've done it and the times I'm planning on doing it. So what I'll do is click on these three dots here, click on group and group by the checkbox. So now I can see here in my habit tracker, the times that I've run separated by the times I've actually done it and the times that I've time blocked to do it. Again, a habit tracker is built into my premium notion template. It's got 2,500 users and a five-star rating. I built it around the best productivity methods in the world and it works beautifully with the notion calendar. To check it out, click the link in the description or if you wanna see the full tour, then click on this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped and I'll see you in this video.